I'd like to call this meeting of the Delaware City Schools Board of Education to order, please. May I have the roll call? Mr. Weiner. Present. Ms. McDaniel Browning. Here. Mr. Weller. Here. Mr. Backus. Here. Ms. Harris. Here. Ms. Himanowski. Here. If we could please all rise to salute the flag, and then afterwards, if we could remain standing for a moment. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Weiner. At this time, I would like us to all observe a moment of silence and remembrance of Maddie Robinson, one of our bus drivers who passed away. Thank you. I know that there was a small adjustment to the agenda before it was posted. Have there been any additional since? No. Then I have a motion to approve the agenda for this evening. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Weller. Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning. Yes. Mr. Weiner. Yes. Mr. Backus. Yes. Ms. Harris. Yes. Ms. Himanowski. Yes. Are there any recognitions and presentations this evening? No, there are none this evening. And then I, uh, how about the unions? I do not see any representations from our unions here this evening. Do we have any legislative updates? I don't have any at this Nothing time. Nothing since the last meeting. And Mr. Sherman, then, facility. Good evening. We get to go sooner and sooner every meeting, it seems like, so we'll get this out of the way. Um, we, we'll see in our packet tonight a uh, summer crew that we've assembled, smaller than what we've seen in the past, but uh, small means mighty, I think. So we still plan on making the rounds like we always do and sprucing up the place, so to speak, with some touch-up paint and some cleaning and some other uh, custodial maintenance type duties. Obviously, be a lot of internal building moves at Woodward, so we'll appreciate all that help there. Uh, found out Friday uh, that we qualified for a grant from AEP for an electric school bus. Uh, this grant would provide $245,000 uh, for the cost of an electric bus and about $4,000 for the cost of the infrastructure to support it. So that means that we can uh, go forward with further investigating the possibility of an electric school bus in the local district sometime within the next couple of years. And we'll be looking closely at all the manufacturers that offer one and comparing some of the uh, equipment and the batteries and uh, we'll keep you posted on how that works. It's kind of an exciting development. Uh, for your formal consideration tonight in your packet, uh, a couple of change orders. Uh, 5.3 is a change order for the Woodward roof. Uh, we need to make a small adjustment on that V-shaped roof you see from the street because we added a temporary roof, as you might remember. There's some detail that needs to be reworked and some additional cost associated with that. 5.5 is a change order uh, which corrects a math <coughs> error that was in a change order we uh, approved for the Willis roof project last year. So uh, with a error in change order three, we have a change order four for you to approve uh, that will fix that map and uh, keep the books straight. Any questions for me this afternoon? Nine days in county for <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Treasurer Swearingen. Yes, um, this evening I would like to review um, just some notes on the five-year forecast um, that you'll be asked to approve later this evening. I have just a couple of slides here with bullet points that might help um, in following along. Um, so tonight we're going to discuss the May 2022 five-year forecast, which must be filed with um, ODE prior to May 31st. Um, we discussed the assumptions driving the forecast at our last meeting, 
and I will go through and review those tonight. Um, there are no significant changes um, from our previous discussion. I'll also go through um, and outline a couple of key changes between this forecast and the forecast that was approved in November of 2021. Um, in terms of revenue, prop our property taxes, um, Properties in Delaware County underwent a triennial update in 2020, um, as you are aware. Um, that impacted our valuations for the 2021 collection year, and we had already reflected those increases in our May 2021 forecast. Future increases that are due to new construction and any board of revision changes are projected to be in line with our historical trends that we've experienced. In November, we were projecting a 3% growth for fiscal year 2022, and we received those finalized um, valuation numbers from the county in December, and the actual growth was actually just over 4% overall. Um, we're projecting a 2% growth per year uh, moving forward in those two categories until we receive our next countywide um, reappraisal that will occur in 2023. So that will impact the 2024 um, collection year. Um, the, the biggest item impacting this line item is our $6.2 million emergency operating levy, which was originally approved in November of 2017. And that has to be renewed no later than November of this year for this revenue stream to continue. And without it, we would have a negative cash balance in fiscal year 2024. So we would be positive next year, but we definitely need that stream of revenue um, to continue our operations. And all approvals um, for that levy have to be submitted to the Board of Elections by August the 10th. So we will start working through that process here starting in June. Um, the next major revenue category is our unrestricted grants and aid. And as you remember back in November, um, when we talked through this, we had not received a payment yet um, on the new funding formula. We were still waiting for that to take place. And that actually happened in February. And then there were some corrections and adjustments made um, in March, April. We even have seen some into May um, to get all of those components fully implemented um, was a big undertaking by the state. Um, so the current state budget, which is House Bill 110, includes the Fair School Funding Plan and that has been implemented by ODE, as I just mentioned. We are projecting phased in increases for fiscal years 22 through 26. Um, the change for the current year, looking back at November, is not a significant change. There are some small changes moving forward as we worked through all of those various components um, and getting a real feel for what that state share index was going to look like, where um, our funding depends on where we rank compared to other districts and, and their wealth as well. Um, so now that we have a better picture, we can really make some better assumptions moving forward into what that's going to look like. Um, we also have to keep in mind that um, some of those components um, look different and while it looks like our revenue has gone down compared to prior years. We actually have an offset on the expense side where the charter schools and some of the scholarships are being directly funded by the state. So instead of receiving those payments at gross and then having the expense, we're, we're seeing that the net impact of, of all of that. Um, <clears throat> so while our revenue is projected to be, like I said, about a million dollars less than what we received in fiscal year 21, um, we also have about $2 million um, in reduced expenses. We are projecting that the fair school funding plan will continue to be gradually phased in over the life of the forecast. Um, and that by 2026, we'll be receiving about two thirds of the total funding that's prescribed under the new formula. Um, but again, House Bill 110 has only guaranteed the funding for the plan through fiscal year 2024. Um, so we still need 
to um, make sure that our legislators understand um, that we do want for this plan to continue and for it to continue to be phased in for funding purposes. Um, the last category on the revenue side that I just wanted to mention briefly is this restricted grants and aid piece um, that if you look at the forecast overall, it seems like a significant increase for fiscal years 22 through 26, but that is also due to some funding formula changes. The student wellness and success dollars we were previously required to account for in a special revenue fund and um, the new budget um, puts those dollars as a restricted general fund receipt. Um, so that money is now included within the forecast and um, many of the positions that are funded with those dollars are hired um, through our agreement with the ESC and we have a corresponding expenditure um, in the other objects category. So you see um, on the expense side, that piece is up um, slightly from prior years as well. So overall, when looking at November to May, um, total revenue is up by just about $1.2 million when you take all of those pieces um, into account for the year. Um, if we look at the expenditure side um, for personnel services, um, currently we are operating under one-year contract extensions on all of our negotiated agreements. Um, we have completed negotiations um, with one bargaining unit and our projections are, are all still subject to the negotiations that take place um, with the other units. We are projecting a 2.75% base increase for fiscal year 23, two and a half for 24, and 2% increases um, after that time period for those last two years. Um, new hires are continuing to be added only as needed and positions to address learning loss and our higher than expected kindergarten enrollment this year um, are being funded through our federal ESSER dollars and those are not included in the forecast. For the current fiscal year, we've added 10 total positions um, that includes both certified and classified staff to address special education caseloads and class sizes. Um, we also shifted one of our speech and language pathologist positions from a purchase service to an in-house position. Um, we historically have been projecting adding four FTEs per year, and that is the case for the remainder of the forecast. We continue to monitor that closely and only add positions that are necessary. In terms of benefits, um, we have our insurance renewals in place for the current calendar year, and um, we're able to offer a rate hold for medical, dental, and life insurance premiums for the calendar year, um, in part because of our move um, to being self-insured. And we project that we will start to see some increases in both the medical and dental premiums um, starting next year. Um, the projection for medical is 10% and the projection for dental is 10% in 23 and then 4% thereafter. Those have not changed um, from our discussion a couple of weeks ago or from what we were projecting in November. We already had the current year rates in place at that time. Um, purchase service, I already spoke to that um, in balancing that out with the unrestricted grants and aid portion um, that that resulted in some reduced expenses to offset those revenue decreases. Um, when looking at the November forecast and comparing that to May, total expenses are projected um, is a decrease of about $487,000 is, is the total um, impact of that. So the last piece um, that I want to, to speak about is our cash balance that our fiscal year 2022 estimates create an operating surplus where our revenues exceed our expenditures by about $1 million. We have a sufficient cash balance to offset um, the projected operating deficit in fiscal year 2023 um, with our positive cash balance that would carry forward. With the current assumptions in place, we project a positive cash balance through 2023 
but we do need to renew that $6.2 million emergency operating levy in order to maintain a positive cash balance through fiscal year 2025. And that cash balance in 2025 is a very small dollar figure, um, about $600,000 at that point. Our November 2021 forecast um, had projected a slightly higher cash balance at the end of 2025. And again, that is due to some of the changes that we've seen um, in a few of those components of the state funding being implemented um, to move forward, as well as some of the changes um, that we made in the salary projections moving forward. Um, in January of 2019, the board approved a cash balance reserve policy, um, indicating it believes that maintaining a cash reserve of 10% of operating ex expenses is necessary in the interest of sound fiscal management. This forecast meets that cash balance reserve for fiscal years 2022 and 2023. Um, with a successful levy renewal, the 10% will be met for fiscal year 2024 as well. Um, please keep in mind that the forecast is a fluid document with many variables and unknowns, and the further out that we project into the future, um, the less reliable it is. Um, the amounts for fiscal years 2022 through 26 are based on our best estimates as of today, and we have two state budget cycles within this forecast um, that will need to be approved and evaluated in addition to other variables and unknowns. Um, so overall with that cash balance piece, um, the ending cash balance for the end of the current fiscal year is about $1.7 million higher um, than what we had originally projected in November. So that I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. And you carried the same assumptions out for the other two bargaining units? I did in terms of what the net financial impact would be. Um, we did use the same assumptions. That was the best information that we had um, at the time. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Heath. Good evening, everyone. Just a couple of quick things for the board this evening. Uh, first of all, this past week, we got our one plan approved by the Ohio Department of Education. They've shifted some things around in the way we do our federal grant uh, budgets and applications. Uh, so we did complete that this year. Um, one of the nice things that uh, we were able to do this year, probably for the first time ever, is align the goals in the one plan um, with goals that we have in the strategic plan which uh, is a nice thing for us. So um, a lot of the action steps, a lot of the goals, uh, all the language uh, is going to be very, very similar in both of those items. So we are moving everything in one direction. Uh, the second thing for you this evening is we are continuing our planning for our summer academy. Um, that will be June 1st and 2nd. And again, the nice thing about our summer academy this year is we've aligned all the professional development around those goals that we have in the one plan and in the strategic plan as well. So um, the professional development that our staff members will be receiving on June 1st and 2nd will be directly aligned with the work that we are looking at in each of those goals and action steps. And that is everything for our report this evening. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Stewart. Good evening, everyone. Um, at your seats tonight, you'll have some information regarding graduation this Friday night uh, from Mr. Ryan Wallace at the high school. Katie, you've got other duties that night, so you know. <laughs> Just a few. <laughs> I don't think you want to trade. So. Um, also, a uh, number of items in Mr. Heath uh, mentioned in summer uh, uh, June 1 and 2. At the June 6th meeting, we will have a stipend proposal for you to recognize those participants at that with a very small stipend to thank them for their time and recognize the, their extra efforts on that. So we don't have their names for it yet, so we'll be bringing that to you June, June 6th since we don't have a meeting between now and then. And then for your interest tonight, a uh, number of items on the consent agenda. 
So a uh, number of personnel things there this evening. Megan Donegan, uh, resignation. David Reed, resignation. And Katrina White, resignation. These are all energy specialists in our certified program, staff program. And classified staff this evening, Karen Mullen, Jody Kennedy, and Siobhan Madigan K. Uh, and you'll know that Siobhan's being then hired as an intervention specialist. Uh, classified substitute, uh, resignation, Vicki Van Gilder. Uh, and then a uh, recommendation for approving appointment. As I mentioned previously, about not even case, an intervention specialist at Dempsey. And then Master Sergeant James Warstel uh, and Haiti for placing him in. He was in today and it was a pleasure to meet him. Uh, he's quite, got quite a, quite a big personality. I think the two of them hit it off. Uh, classified staff, uh, recommendations for our Nibit Petra and Mary Escalante. And then uh, some sub uh, substitute, Jody Kennedy, who was residing earlier there, you saw this is the as a substitute. The 2022 summer crew, as mentioned by Mr. Sherman, Elaine Clark, Lisa Harmon as the crew leader, Brendan Palmquist, Don Shannon as assistant crew leader, uh, Rebecca Turner, Tristan Tyree, Jillian Ulmer, and Leah Wasilko. Then requesting uh, extended service days. This is the annual list of extended service days uh, that we approve each year annually going into the summer. Uh, some of these take place this summer, uh, and so we, and then some take place at the start of next summer. So this list basically goes to July 1 through June 30 for the following year. And then approving a number of bus drivers who uh, signed up to provide summer transportation this summer for programs like our 2022 summer uh, summer school programs, uh, the reading math camps uh, over the summer, and then uh, field trips and school age doctor programming. Uh, approving one uh, student auditorium technician, Trooper Flom, uh, and then uh, the five, five year financial forecast that Treasurer CFO started to mention. And then uh, we had a, a Number of generous donations began. Uh, the family of Maddie Robinson uh, requested donations in her honor and memory uh, to our special education department. And a number of those have come in in our uh, church's office and been tracking those. Uh, and they've been very generous from these individuals. And then uh, my gift card to uh, use for the Will Program graduation program, celebration for their students who are in at this time. So, thank you for your interest in tonight's consent agenda items. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I noticed there were three intervention specialists as part of the resignations. Was there a special thing going on? A lot of moves and a lot of opportunity in Central Ohio. And Delaware has a lot of opportunity. We've had um, some real interest in those and physicians and bringing you recommendations on them. We're watching this very carefully. You are correct. Thank you. We are excited to see, though, the number of applicants that we're having in all of those areas. So that is exciting for us, and our teams are conducting interviews at this time. Thank you. Uh, Superintendent Hagley. Yes, I just um, wanted to thank the board for your support of our transportation team and everyone who has supported them during this recent loss of Maddie Robinson. And I do want to extend. Um, her husband came in and met with us and just wanted to thank the entire Delaware City Schools team for the support that he has felt and that his family has felt during this difficult time. So I wanted to share that with all of you as he was here at the office uh, just last week. Um, we are seeing so many exciting events taking place at our schools this time of year, our students being celebrated, our staffs being celebrated as we talked earlier this month, and just really recognizing our students for all of their achievements. Um, I know the Gazette's been covering some of those, and then of course Mrs. Rui continues to share that out to our school community. And most importantly, looking forward to graduation on Friday evening and celebrating all of our graduates, and Kate, Ms. Hemanowski included. Um, we will be celebrating Katie specifically at our June 6th board meeting, so we'll look forward to that opportunity and a little surprise for Katie. 
In addition, we submitted PPG for the Ohio School Boards Association Business Honor Roll, and they were accepted. So we are scheduling a time to meet and present them their certificate at PPG um, to better meet their schedules needs. But as you remember, they have contributed significant grants to our elementary schools, middle school, and high school. We just appreciate their reconnection and re-engagement with the schools. And so we will be presenting them with their certificate at their convenience. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. I don't believe there was any board requested. No. That would bring us then to public participation. Um, tonight we have several public participation requests. Uh, we thank you for attending this meeting to address the Board of Education. Statements are limited to five minutes per person. Uh, we will hear what you have to say, although board members and school officials will not answer questions during the public participation. If uh, the board requests further information about your topic, we will contact you. Otherwise, I will ask the superintendent or other administrator to follow up on actions required. All right, and this evening we had one individual who was pre-registered who I don't see here this evening. No. Um, so we can go ahead and move into um, the individuals who submitted forms, um, first of which is Tamika Venson reed Good evening, everyone. So initially, I'll be very uh, transparent. I plan to you know, get up here and share our ask of the district. <coughs> <coughs> and then Buffalo happened. And so, you know, we watched an 18 year old um, hunt down and target African Americans in a community, just casually going about their day. And, you know, there was a flurry of questions. You know, first it was like, you know, here we, you know, here we go again, you know, because of our our aberrant history as it relates to this terrorism, white terrorism, white supremacist um, terrorism. But I started thinking about, you know, our kids who see this stuff happen um, in the news. And, you know, as families, of course, some of us have the conversations, but as they come to school, you know, I started thinking about, are they feeling safe? Do they feel targeted? What conversations are happening in our classrooms? Because this stuff is, it's here, it's with us, it's real, it's tangible, it's, it's here. And so, you know, as I started thinking about these asks of the district, I literally just thought about our children, our kids. You know, how are they coming into school? How are they feeling? What are we providing for them as far as resources? Are we offering up counseling? You know, I mean, what are we doing as a district? And so that's just been top of mind for me before I could even jump into the ask of the district. I just had to acknowledge that that's a very real feeling. And I feel for our teachers who have to come up with talking points, who have to help kids process, um, because I think we need to have a response as a district for our children who may be feeling targeted or who may not be feeling safe in their own skin. And I apologize and emotional because it's it's real. And I think we have to we have to realize how real it is for our students. Because you may not be in this skin, you may not understand how it feels, but I never want a student to feel targeted, like they can't just come and exist and be. And I think we have to be honest as a district that we have to deal with what our kids are feeling. So I apologize for that, but I'm going to read these because that is why I'm here. So as a district, um, we are asking again that we hire a chief diversity and inclusion and equity develop a director that reports to the superintendent and develops district-wide standards. This position must be supported by full-time staff, member with plans to grow into the department. Two, create a racial incidents response team to document and address dramatic racial occurrences with the Delaware City Schools in partnership with the council and other partners in the community. Three, declare a resolution on education equity and anti-racism. Four, Establish a recruitment and retention plan to attract diverse administrators, teachers, counselors, and staff by developing strategies to attract this target demographic to our district. Five, institute a mandatory and ongoing anti-racism training for all Delaware City School employees at all levels. And six, develop age-appropriate anti-racism curriculum for all students at Delaware City School. And again, I apologize for being so full but this topic is 
It's personal because I shared with you all at the last meeting what my daughter experienced and what resources were available to her. I don't want to see any other child go through this. Melissa here shared with you all what her daughter went through. And so we have a commitment for these students to not only be academically successful and viable, but they have to be emotionally, socially, mental. All it all has to work together, right? This is a holistic, this is a body. And so we have to be responsible for making sure that we turn out successful children, not only academically, but their mental health, they're just stable. And so I appreciate you all for listening. I apologize for tearing up and being very full, but um, that's how I feel with that. Very full. So thank you. Thank you. And Mark Butler, you're welcome to make your way to the podium while I'm resetting the timer here. <clears throat> Go right ahead. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm Mark Butler, 407 Western Virginia Drive, Delaware, Ohio. Uh, thank you, Tamika, for uh, sharing uh, your deep thoughts. Uh, my brothers and sisters who are board members, who are superintendents uh, and other administrators, uh, we still have a problem in America. We still have a problem here in Delaware City. As I continue to work, I don't know if I'm going to be working in the fall, but as I continue to work as a substitute teacher, and it's something about that word substitute. Like the young people I work with over at Dempsey, they have a tendency, oh, you're nothing but a substitute. Now, what does that mean to me? Oh, I'm not real? Because substitute butler instead of Mr. Butler, your real teacher? Let me tell you something. After the recent events in February, I'm more than a substitute. I'm a black man living in Delaware, experiencing, still experiencing racism in this town. Whether I'm on the campaign trail, whether I'm in the hallways of Dipsy, Hayes, even out in elementary schools. What's going on? I'm sure glad you asked that question. And what's going on, uh, board members and people in the audience and people listening to me out there, if you're on Facebook, TikTok, whatever media you're on, what's going on is white supremacy. It's been supported in this city by the recent events of the former president coming here and the, and the so-called want-to-be senator embracing white supremacy, embracing nationalism as a way of life. Now, as African American, I'm tired. And I'm not going to give up for change, because change is the only way. Matter of fact, I speak change is happening. White supremacy does exist in Delaware City schools, in the hallways of Dipsy, in the hallways of Hayes. Recent article, or I say two years ago, by uh, Mr. Aaron Cook, a couple of quotes, the curriculum department has trained over 100 staff members in restorative practices. I'm waiting to see what works. Another quote, no bullying cases were reported in Delaware City schools. I guess it must be a, a, a pigment of my imagination or a figure. Whatever word you want to use. Am I just dreaming these things up? And it almost be reported? Report the incidents so we can take more action. There's evidence. I'm evidence that the uh, racism is alive and well. Report it. If it also, if the district, the district has implemented tactful steps to reduce bullying. When? When is the implementation going to happen? We still have young people uh, say the N word oh, as I speak over Dempsey. Where is the tactical implementation? I don't see it. Now, I'm going to uh, conclude here uh, with one of the uh, call to actions, which is uh, repeating what I just said a few minutes ago. Racial incidents have largely gone undocumented unaddressed for decades at Delaware City Schools. And even as a result of a, a lawsuit in 1990 uh, to help resolve these things, uh, a stress in a traumatic situation, uh, there's been no therapeutic intervention. 
There's been no culturally specific programming to reach people who look like me. I'm going to think of black people who black young people in, in February. There was no counseling on them from their perspective. Where's the reconciliation for, uh, for the victim, for the black young person who's still in pain? I can say right now, say, how you doing, mister? How you doing? How you feeling? These young people are still in pain. But because we come from a people with resilience, putting up with all this stuff since 1619, it's time for change. I'm just going to take those last few minutes to honor the uh, uh, people of the land, first, uh, first Americans here in this county uh, who moved out off their uh, land. And it continues with the BIPOC people, people of color, being pushed up, being not heard. Thank you. Okay, thank you. That concludes public participation for this evening. Thank you. That brings us to the consent agenda for this evening. Is there anything further that needs to be discussed? May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. And then that brings us to action items, the second reading and approval of the revised uh, board policies as presented. Uh, may I have a motion to approve the uh, board policies? So moved. A second. Roll call. Mr. Weller? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. With our materials, we have the Metal Meta Fifth School Year 23 Tech Services Agreement. Uh, does anyone have any further comments on that or questions? If not, can I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. 5.3 was the change order number two for the weatherproofing technologies for additional roof work at Woodward Elementary. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. Item 5.4 would be the 2021 to 25 strategic plan for Delaware City Schools. Uh, is there any discussion on the strategic plan? If not, can I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. Item 5.5 would be a change order number four for uh, roofing at Willis with the Willis re Roof Replacement Project. This was the math error correction that was discussed. Is there a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. Item 5.6 would be the approval of the agreement with Delaware City Schools Educators Ed Association. Uh, Ms. Swearingen, I know there was a change. There was, a, I believe, a fiscal or a time uh, calculation error on one of the pages. Yes. There, um, at your places, there is a revised printout of page 71 of that agreement. It's the supplemental salary schedule for 2023-2024. And it is just the very last line that's highlighted there, step nine um, for the groupings seven, eight, nine, and 10. There was a calculation error um, in those amounts and the corrected amounts are reflected on the highlighted sheet in front of you. 
Is there anything special that we need for uh, the motion to approve? No, we will just make sure that it gets updated in the document. We just wanted to make sure that you had the corrected information in front of you. Did anyone have any questions? Then may I have a motion to approve that? So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Weller? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. Harris? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes. And then that brings us back to superintendent comments. I do not have anything additional this evening, but of course would like to turn over to Ms. Hemanowski as she prepares for graduation this week. So we find this past month of school being one of, one of the most bittersweet times that a lot of students experience, especially as a senior. I find the end of activities that I found comfort in. I find the end of activities that I found challenge and growth in. And most importantly, or I guess most difficult, I face the potential end of friendships that have grown with me for 12 years at this point. And in those 12 years, I've gotten to know a lot of people very well. And that brings me to something kind of serious that I want to talk about tonight, which is the mental health of students within the district. And I feel like, and I see that for the most part, students who fit in the category of like general, of typical, I guess you would say, tend to do pretty well. But students who fall into other, maybe because of their race or their sexual orientation or because of their gender orientation, something that's very visible, they tend to struggle more. They tend to have a harder time finding support. They tend to have a harder time finding peers who care about them. And frankly, the number of times that I have walked into the bathroom and comforted a student who I couldn't tell you their first name because they were crying, because they needed someone in that moment, should be zero. And it's not. And I, I haven't kept a comprehensive record, but as I've gotten older, the number has gotten higher. And especially through the past two years, that number has grown. And the number of times that a younger student, a freshman or a sophomore has come to me and told me things that they have experienced that they don't feel safe sharing with the school district is, I don't want to say preposterous because it's happened and I've seen it happen and I've experienced it. But I think that as a school district, when we assert ourselves as one of the, you know, the, the parents are the primary guardian of a student, and then there's the school district, we have a responsibility to take care of every part of a student, their physical life, their academic life, and their emotional and mental life as well. Because if we let students graduate or move through school while they're undergoing mental stress or trauma even, then we haven't taken care of them. And I think that there needs to be some kind of work done, and I haven't fully, I have thoughts about this that I could talk about for a long time, um, to cater to more than just the, oh, you're stressed about school? Well, let's check your grades and see what we can do to support you there. Because many students are comfortable doing that, but many need more support than just academically. I think that's something that we should acknowledge and something that we should work to support students. Well, thank you, I appreciate that, and I appreciate you listening to me tonight, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Amineski. Are there any additional board comments this evening? And we have some fun things on the calendar. We have the Dempsey Orchestra Concert on the 17th, the uh, Elementary Orchestra Concert, Senior Awards Night, and graduation on May 20th. Um, our last day for students is May 27th, and our next meeting would be on June 6th. Uh, with that, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? Moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Backus? Yes. Ms. McDaniel Browning? Yes. Mr. Weiner? Yes. Mr. Weller? Yes. Ms. Mm -hmm. Harris? Yes. Ms. Himanowski? Yes.